Good afternoon. I'm Michael Kelleher, Program Director of the Donald Wyndham Sandy M. Campbell Literature Prizes. On behalf of the Beinecke Rare Book and Manuscript Library, I'd like to welcome all of you to the inaugural Wyndham Campbell Prize Ceremony. Today's event is also the kickoff for the first ever Wyndham Campbell Prizes Festival. For the next few days, we will celebrate the work of our prize winners with a series of readings, talks, classes, book signings. We hope to make this an annual event to start the school year, and we look forward to seeing you throughout the week. Before we begin, I'd like to take a minute to thank everyone involved in making the prizes and festival a reality. The estate of Donald Wyndham, the office of the university president, the office of development, the director and staff of the Beinecke Library, the prize steering committee, the nominators, jurors, and members of the selection committee, the Whitney Humanities Center, Yale School of Drama, Yale Theater Studies Program, the masters of Branford, Calhoun, Ezra Stiles, Jonathan Edwards, Morse, Pearson, and Saybrook Colleges, the Department of English, the Department of African American Studies, Yale Council on African Studies, Council on Middle Eastern Studies, Afro-American Cultural Center, Jackson Institute for Global Affairs, Yale School of Music, Yale University Art Gallery, Yale Law School, Office of the University Printer, Yale University Bookstore, Cooperative Arts and Humanities High School, um, and uh, a special thanks to my assistant, Jennifer Castellon, who has silently made this whole thing happen. <laughs> when people ask about the Wyndham Campbell Prizes, they usually have three questions. Where does the money come from? How did the prizes end up at Yale? And how are the prize winners selected? Usually in that order. To answer the first two questions, I need to tell you a little bit about Donald Wyndham and Sandy Campbell. Wyndham was a writer, Campbell an actor. Wyndham wrote novels, short stories, memoirs, plays, even a children's book. Campbell acted on Broadway and in traveling companies. They counted among their friends some of the most important artists of their time, Tennessee Williams, Truman Capote, Joseph Cornell, and Montgomery Clift. The list goes on. The two remained a couple from the time they met in the early 40s until Sandy Campbell's untimely death in 1988. As a young man, Wyndham co-wrote a play with Tennessee Williams called You Touched Me, based on a story by D.H. Lawrence. While it was not a huge box office success, the royalties he received allowed him to quit his job and devote himself to his first novel. Financial freedom provided the time he needed to focus on his writing. Wyndham and Campbell had discussed the idea of creating an award to support writers for many years, inspired by, Wyndham's, inspired by the important role financial independence had played in Wyndham's career as a writer. When Campbell passed away, Wyndham took on the responsibility for making this shared dream a reality. Out of devotion to Campbell's memory, Wyndham ignored the advice of his financial advisors and retained the Campbell family stocks he'd inherited. His resolve and modest lifestyle were rewarded, and he became wealthy enough to realize their goal of creating a global literature prize. Wyndham had already entrusted some of his papers to the Beinecke Rare Book and Manuscript Library, and the relationship he developed with the Beinecke convinced him that Yale was the ideal place to create a prize of the scale and prestige they had envisioned. To answer the third question in detail, I refer you to our website, www.wyndhamcampbell.org, which contains a detailed explanation of the selection process. In brief, the nominators, literary, the nominators, who are all literary experts from around the world, nominated 20 writers in drama, fiction, and nonfiction. A three-person jury in each category selected five finalists from among the 20. An eight-member selection committee made the final decisions in all three categories. Tonight, we honor the nine writers whose work inspired the nominators to nominate them, the jurors to move them forward in the process, and the selection committee to single out their extraordinary work for recognition. Stephen Adley Girgis, Adina Hoffman, Terrell Alvin McCraney, Tom McCarthy, James Salter, Jeremy Scahill, 
Johnny Steinberg, Naomi Wallace, and Zoe Wickham. To present them with their awards, please welcome Peter Salovey. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Michael. Welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Peter Salovey, the uh, uh, fairly new president of Yale University. This is, uh, I think, day 72 for me, but it is certainly uh, one of the most exciting ones so far. And I'm just delighted to uh, be a part of this uh, inaugural celebration. I want to thank, uh, in addition to Michael, uh, E.C. Schroeder and the Beinecke Rare Book and Manuscript Library, uh, as they are the custodian uh, of this extraordinary prize. And, uh, you know, inauguration is, as you might guess, is a topical subject for me at the moment. And so uh, let me say I'm, I'm really just um, doubly excited that uh, we inaugurate uh, this very week the Donald Wyndham Sandy Campbell Literature Prizes uh, and the Associated Festival. As Michael noted in his remarks, uh, it was the relationship that he developed with Yale that led Donald Wyndham to establish the prizes here. I don't know exactly what Wyndham was thinking when he made his decision, uh, but I have thought a bit about the qualities Yale possesses that make it the ideal place to establish prizes of such distinction. Yale is a place that hopes to recognize, inspire, and nurture excellence in every field. The group of writers we honor here today embodies the ideal, in, uh, this ideal in the field of world literature. It is our hope that these prizes will help them continue to pursue excellence in their writing so that we might benefit from the work they produce. But Yale is not just about winning prizes. I think perhaps the key word in Michael's description is relationship. When people like Donald Wyndham give their papers to the Beinecke Library, they enter into a relationship with the students and professors at Yale and with the worldwide community of scholars, artists and thinkers who form the bedrock upon which the university is built. It's my feeling that by establishing the prizes here at Yale, Don Donald Wyndham knew that he was placing them in the care of a friend who shared his concerns that writers be supported and that their achievements not go unrecognized. Today we recognize those achievements as we welcome our prize winners into our community. To all of them, I would like to say congratulations and welcome to Yale. And now we will bestow the prizes. The Donald Wyndham Sandy Campbell Literature Prizes call attention to literary achievement and provide writers with the opportunity to focus on their work independent of financial concerns, at least for a while. <laughs> Prizes are awarded annually in the categories of drama, nonfiction, and fiction. English language writers from anywhere in the world and at any stage of their careers are eligible for consideration and each prize winner receives a citation and $150,000 to support their writing. Today, each of our honorees will receive a prize diploma. The diplomas are hand-bound artist books designed by Sarah Horowitz of Portland, Oregon. Each diploma features the prize citation and an original pen and ink drawing by the artist. So let's start with the drama category. The three prize winners are Stephen Adley Girgis, Terrell Avin McCraney, and Naomi Wallace. Stephen Adley Girgis is a playwright whose work brings underrepresented voices, the poor, the imprisoned, the traitorous, the betrayed, 
to vivid, riotous life. Gerges is a longtime member and former artistic director of New York City's Labyrinth Theater Company, a groundbreaking ensemble of actors committed to writing and staging their own productions. A number of Gerges' plays were first produced by Labyrinth under the direction of Philip Seymour Hoffman, including The Little Flower of East Orange. I grew up very near East Orange, so this one rings true for me. The Last Days of Judas uh, Iscariot, and uh, in Arabia, We'd All Be Kings. His most recent play, The Motherfucker with the Hat, about an ex-convict and a drug addict described in The New Yorker as one of the most beautifully drawn couples to appear on the stage in years, premiered on Broadway in 2011 and received six Tony nominations. Now, my guess is uh, that isn't the first time that word has been uttered from this stage, <laughs> but it certainly was the first time uttered by a Yale president. I'm <laughs> fairly certain of that. <laughs> I, I hope that was for the playwright. A former, a former violence prevention specialist and HIV educator, Gerges has facilitated numerous workshops in the New York City area, uh, in prisons, in schools, in shelters, and in hospitals. The prize citation for Stephen Adley Gerges reads, Stephen Adley Gerges writes dramatic dialogue with passion and humor creating characters who live on the edge and whose linguistic bravado reinvigorates the American vernacular. Stephen. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. so close. <laughs> Terrell Alvin McCraney is a playwright and actor best known for his acclaimed trilogy, The Brother-Sister Plays, which blends myth with realism in the intergenerational story of an African-American community in Louisiana. McCraney has been lauded as the kind of voice that can define a generation. Ben Bradley wrote of the brother-sister plays in the New York Times, it is what people must have felt during productions of the early works of Eugene O'Neill in the 1920s or of Sam Shepard in the 1960s. McCraney is an ensemble member of Chicago's Steppenwolf Theater Company, which premiered his new play, Head of Passes, this spring. He is also a resident playwright at New Dramatists and a member of Tio Castane Castaneo's D Projects in Miami, where he grew up in the Liber Liberty City housing projects in the 1980s. McCraney's other plays include The Breach, written with Joe Sutton uh, and Catherine Fallot about Hurricane Katrina, and Wig Out, about a family of New York drag queens. His latest play, Choir Boy, was produced at the Manhattan Theater Club. He is a graduate of the Yale School of Drama. The prize citation for Terrell Alvin McCraney reads, Terrell Alvin McCraney's working class characters inhabit an extraordinary mythic universe, speaking a poetic language through which we grasp the spiritual stature of embattled people. Congratulations, Terrell. I hope I pronounced the collaborator's name so Congratulations. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you. Naomi Wallace is an American playwright living in England. Throughout her celebrated and incendiary career, Wallace has explored the role of politics and power in shaping human experience. Be it 17th century London during the Great Plague in One Flea Spare, among black communist organizers in 1930s Alabama, Things of Dry Hours, 
or in the parallel dramas of the Vietnam and Gulf Wars in the heart of America. Though her work can be dark and almost brutal in its vision, Tony Kushner maintains that Wallace is outrageously optimistic. She seems to believe that the world can change. She certainly writes as if she intends to set it on fire. Her most recent play, The Liquid Plain, won the 2012 Horton Foote Prize for the most promising new American play and had its world premiere at the Oregon Shakespeare Festival in July. The prize citation for Naomi Wallace reads, Naomi Wallace minds historical situations in plays that are muscular, devastating, and unwavering. Naomi. Thank you. Congratulations. Let me get your... Congratulations. You're so thrilled. So thrilled. So I have to just say something personal. Uh, many of you know I'm a psychologist, uh, but I have a brother who's uh, an associate artistic director of a theater, the San Diego Rep Theater, and I sent him a little note about our three uh, playwrights who, who won last night, and he wrote me back this effusive note saying he just couldn't believe who we were honoring and he wished he could fly in, and he went on and on like this. So I, uh, I was just really thrilled that I could impress my brother through the three. <laughs> of you. He's hard to impress. <coughs> okay. The three prize winners in the nonfiction category are Adina Hoffman, Jeremy Scahill, and Johnny Steinberg. Adina Hoffman is the author of three nonfiction books that expand and enrich our understanding of the Middle East through their juxtaposition of personal and political histories. In My Happiness Bears No Relation to Happiness, A Poet's Life in the Palestinian Century, Hoffman, Hoffman's meticulously researched and vividly written biography of the Palestinian poet Taha Muhammad Ali becomes a window onto the fate of the Palestinian people in the wake of the 1948 war and its ensuing displacements. Hoffman divides her time between New Haven and Jerusalem, and House of Windows, Portraits from a Jerusalem Neighborhood, provides an intimate portrait of daily life in the conflict-ridden city. Sacred Trash, The Lost and Found World of the Cairo Geniza, written with Peter Cole, tells the story of both the discovery of an astonishing trove of Jewish manuscripts in Egypt and the remarkable men and women who brought it to light. The prize citation for Adina Hoffman reads, in a land where even the most cautious nonfiction can draw howls of protest, Adina Hoffman combines fastidious listening, even-handed research, and prose so engaging that it makes the long vanished visible again. Adina. Congratulations. So good to see you again. Congratulations. Jeremy Scahill is an investigative journalist and author whose work has sparked several congressional investigations and won some of, some of journalism's highest honors. His reporting has led him to Afghanistan, Iraq, Somalia, Yemen, the former Yugoslavia, and elsewhere across the globe. In addition to his work as National Security Correspondent for The Nation and Puffin Writing Fellow at The Nation Institute, Scahill is the author of the best-selling books Blackwater, The Rise of the World's Most Powerful Mercenary Army, and Dirty Wars, The World is a Battlefield. He also wrote and produced the documentary film Dirty Wars, which exposes covert American counterterrorism operations 
including targeted killings and drone strikes executed without congressional oversight or public debate. Scahill was twice awarded the George Polk Award for his work. The prize citation for Jeremy Scahill reads, Jeremy Scahill's investigative reporting is in the best tradition of speaking truth to power, waging a political campaign by journalistic means, indefatigable in its detail, and international in outlook. Jeremy. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations. Great to work in the nation. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Johnny Steinberg is a South African writer and scholar. In books like Midlands, about the murder of a white South African farmer, and The Number, a biography of a prison gang member, Steinberg uses personal narratives to shed new light on contemporary South African life and politics. Three Letter Plague tells the story of one South African man's refusal to be tested for HIV, elucidating the deep stigma and cultural ambivalence that continue to characterize the country's HIV AIDS epidemic. Steinberg has recently expanded his attention beyond South Africa with the publication of Little Liberia, in which the trauma of Liberia's civil war is approached obliquely through an, exiled commu an exile community in New York. In addition to his books, Steinberg is a regular columnist for South Africa's Business Day and a lecturer in African Studies at the University of Oxford. The prize citation for Johnny Steinberg reads, Using a novelistic style that gives everyday people heroic complexity and scale, Johnny Steinberg allows us to encounter lives that enlarge our empathy and sharpen our understanding of the human condition. Johnny. Congratulations, congratulations. We now come to the three prize winners in the fiction category, and they are Tom McCarthy, James Salter, and Zoe Wickham. Tom McCarthy is a writer and artist from London, England. Since the publication of his first novel, Remainder, in 2005, praised by Zadie Smith in the New York Review of Books as one of the great English novels of the last 10 years, McCarthy's writing has boldly expanded our conception of what fiction should look like and what it can do. In Remainder, an unnamed narrator suffers a brain injury and uses the settlement money to stage elaborate reenactments of his memories and dreams. The novel won the 2008 Believer Book Award, and in Smith's words, offered a glimpse of an alternate road down which the novel might, with difficulty, travel forward. His two subsequent novels, novels Men in Space and Sea, further rupture and revise conventional understandings of the individual self in relation to his world. C was a finalist for the 2010 Man Booker Prize. McCarthy is also a founder and general secretary of the International Necronautical Society, INS, a semi-fictitious network of writers, <laughs> philosophers, and artists intervening against idealism in philosophy and idealist or transcendent conceptions of art. <laughs> the prize citation for Tom McCarthy reads, Tom McCarthy constructs strange worlds where we find reflective echoes of our own and meditations on the meaning and making of art. Tom. That's great. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations.
James Salter is the author of six novels and two short story collections. Born in 1925, James Salter grew up in New York City, graduated from West Point, and served in the US Army Air Force for 12 years. His first novel, The Hunters, drew on his experience as a pilot in the Korean War. Soon after its publication, Salter resigned from the Air Force in order to devote himself wholly to his writing. His other novels include A Sport and a Pastime, a classic of erotic realism, and Light Years. His subject is human desire in its many forms, longing, jealousy, ambition, the need to triumph, to achieve perfection, to be loved, to belong very much uh, the dream of a psychologist who finds himself a university president, I think. <laughs> All that is, his first novel in 35 years was published this April. It was welcomed by the New York Times as a work that manages to, both be, to be both recognizable, no one but Salter could have written it, and yet strikingly original, vigorous proof that this literary lion is still very much on the prowl. The prize citation for James Salter reads, sentence by sentence, James Salter's elegantly natural prose has a precision and clarity which make ordinary words swing wide open. James. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Zoe Wickham was born in South Africa and lives in Glasgow, Scotland. Her fiction demonstrates an ongoing preoccupation with deep insight into apartheid and its legacies. In prose hailed by Toni Morrison as seductive, brilliant, and precious, Wickham's first book of stories, You Can't Get Lost in Cape Town, articulates the experience of mixed race or colored South Africans under apartheid. In her two subsequent novels, David's Story and Playing in the Light, and her most recent story collection, The One That Got Away, Wickham widens her focus to explore the persistent influence of race and gender in shaping South African life in a post-apartheid society and an increasingly interconnected world. Wickham is an emeritus professor at the University of Strathclyde. The prize citation for Zoe Wickham reads, Zoe Wickham's subtle, lively language and beautifully crafted narratives explore the complex entanglements of home and the continuing challenges of being in the world. So. Congratulations. We're very really honored by being here. Thank you so much. Thank you. So please join me one last time as I ask our prize winners to rise and uh, imitate their photograph here and uh, accept our applause. Uh, the first Donald Wyndham Sandy Camel Literature Prize. Winner.